Hello and welcome to all of you who have joined us to watch this very special interview. I'm Suchet Nare, editor of Outlook Business, and I have with me two very special guests, Mr. Dinesh Agarwal, Joint Managing Director, Panasonic Life Solutions India, and Mr. Amit Barve, Business Unit Head of Solar at Panasonic Life Solutions. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you guys over here. Thank you so much for taking the time out and joining us. Before we dive into the many questions that I have for both of you, let me do a very short introduction of Panasonic Life Solutions India. It's a company, of course, which requires no introduction, but I will still go ahead. Established in 1963, Panasonic Life Solutions India, which was formerly known as Anchor Electricals, it is a wholly owned subsidiary of Panasonic Corporation. With a constantly expanding product range and growing market share, it is one of the leading manufacturers of electrical construction materials with presence across India. Its sales and operating profits are steadily growing, as we can see in its uh, results quarter on quarter, and it concluded the last financial year with net sales of nearly 40 billion rupees. Being a prominent player in the Indian electrical segment, the company has about 35 domestic offices and over 9,500 employees. So without wasting any more time, let me dive straight into the questions. Welcome, Mr. Agarwal. Welcome, Mr. Barbie, once again. And my first question to you. The demand to build a decarbonized society is growing even stronger, you know, especially with the recently con concluded Glasgow summit. The Japanese government has already declared its intent to achieve a carbon neutral society by reducing net carbon emissions to zero by 2050. How is Panasonic Life Solutions in India ensuring energy efficiency and supporting the move towards carbon, neutra carbon neutrality? Japan is committed to uh, zero carbon emissions by 2050. Uh, we've set ourselves uh, uh, an objective by 2030, we will have uh, no emissions from any of our factory. Uh, of course, uh, we, are not, uh, we are not a large power guzzler, uh, but uh, whatever, uh, you know, we will, we will uh, uh, nullify that. Uh, over the years, uh, we have uh, substituted, uh, you know, our city power supply with uh, solar rooftop. So all our factories today have uh, solar rooftop uh, power generation, which caters to a part of the requirement in the factory. Uh, the biggest initiatives that we have taken is in our uh, manufacturing, where uh, you know we had a large bank of about 250 injection molding machines. Uh, we have uh, we have changed those machines from the old hydraulic machines to electrical machines, which are more power efficient. We have invested in larger molds so that uh, we can uh, our output per per mold shot uh, can go up because we do large numbers of plastic components every day. So some of these initiatives, uh, similarly on the metal working, some of these initiatives has helped us in reducing our power uh, uh, substantially. And then of course, uh, each product that we design today, uh, you, know, you know, whether it's a simple switch uh, or to the automation products that we have, they are all designed to save power. Even in switch, when you switch on and off, there's a power consumption which is happening. So we, we design in such a way that there's a minimum uh, you know, power loss at that point in time. Uh, uh, and then you know, uh, we use our water, uh, cons you know, we conserve our water, we, use the, you know, we, we recharge the groundwater, we use the, uh, the STP water, treat it and use it for uh, you know, our own use and for gardening. Uh, our green spaces, especially in the new factory, we have given substantial amount of green spaces. So initiatives like these uh, you know, obviously uh, are ingrained. Uh, and uh, uh, as I said, that uh, apart from solar, we have all other products which help in uh, saving power and hence contributing towards uh, the sustainability goals, uh, the clean energy goals of uh, India. Interesting uh, takeaways from there. Um, my next question, could you tell us about, uh, you know, your sustainability and solar business plans, keeping India as, as uh, your focus? Yes, I mean, you're absolutely right. In fact, when we started our solar business in 2015, uh, it was very difficult uh, to justify the capital investment uh, you know a customer should make uh, for generating power for, even for the captive use uh, over the years uh, of course uh, it has become more commercially viable and you have a higher acceptance uh, but the customers still are concerned about the returns how many years of returns uh, are, you know are, uh, how can they minimize that how can they you know get faster returns and so on uh, similarly, on the, the automation business uh, that we have been promoting now for about three years, 
uh, when it comes to commercial spaces like offices or a hotel or a hospital, it's relatively easier for us to uh, uh, sell our energy saving product or energy saving system. But when it comes to residential, you cannot use energy as a platform for selling these automation products. Uh, it doesn't sink in into the customer because you know the investment uh, in, in the customer's terms and individual residential uh, owner's terms would come to about seven to eight years. Uh, he's not going to buy uh, on, on those grounds. So there we sell more on the comfort and safety uh, platform. Uh, but yeah, on, on the commercial spaces, uh, it's beginning to happen. But here again, let me, let me, uh, let me sort of uh, throw in a caution that the developers uh, still don't buy it because you can understand the mindset that for the developer, he's got to develop the building and then hand it over to the occupants and then he's away. You know, it does, you know he doesn't care what's the cost of power per unit. Uh, that's been the traditional mindset. But increasingly, uh, the developers are also getting uh, sensitized to this. Uh, they want to offer buildings uh, which can be occupied by tenants where the power consumption is, uh, uh, a power uh, tariff is lower, where there's a you know, clean or green energy which is uh, being also substituted along with the normal energy. But it's still very early days. So yes, there are, there are hurdles. Uh, so I think it's the mindset change which will take some more time. Panasonic has been investing in development of technologies that will improve energy saving performance of products and innovations to manufacturing processes. Now, you have to tell us more how adaptability of renewable energy is happening in India, especially with, uh, you know, the residential customers. Uh, I, th I think so. this is a very important subject for us to dwell upon uh, is the adaptability of uh, individual house owner or individual me as a person when I will be actually making that shift. Uh, to consume renewable energy, green energy as compared to the conventional sources and this adoption is getting uh, facilitated by two things which are happening right now. It's not only happening in India, it's happening worldwide, that's what we could see. Uh, is the policy makers are making it, it much more conducive for these alternate technologies to take over as a prime role, uh, which is actually pushing the envelope or pushing the mandate for adoption. And secondly, as the consumption of renewable energies is increasing every year and every day, the price at which uh, the renewable energies were getting generated, maybe like 10 years back, it used to be something around like 17, 18 rupees per kilowatt hour. Today, it has come down to the level of 3 to 4 rupees per kilowatt hour as far as if I, if I concern about solar is concerned. Yeah, so this cost differential which is happening in terms of energy generation uh, is one of the major factor why the adoption rate is actually going up and come to think of it actually the diesel generating set or the power backups are our need of the time no doubt about it but those are getting restricted for the use only as an emergency services while your normal consumption is actually getting shifted towards the renewable energy. Today there has been a quite a good amount of movement in corporates where actually corporates are going ahead and buying a green power rather than buying a normal power, maybe even at an additional cost because they seem that they are committing themselves towards the cleaner future and they don't mind paying a bit of amount of extra buck but look at actually sourcing a green power. At individual level, still the movement is just started. I think so it will take some time because in India especially, uh, we have a cross-subsidized tariff where the individual homeowner actually pays a less amount of tariff as compared to the bulk buyers like industry and commercial thing. Uh, but as, as, as the support from the government for this crop subsidization will keep going off, uh, going off, I think so the adaptability from the individual house owner will also go up. Secondly, as we are growing as a nation, uh, with the increase in the GDP, there is a clear cut direct impact onto the consumption pattern. And even if you see, especially people staying in the cities, our consumption per capita or per month is far more higher as compared to the class B town or C towns. Yeah. And as, as the development index keeps going up, uh, this consumption will keep going up. And now there are actually time of the day tariff as well as consumption based tariffs which are coming up. So if your consumption, it goes into a certain bracket, your tariff also increases in a multiple fold. And I think so there the price feasibility starts coming up for the individual house owners to adopt for it. Maybe difficult for a places like Mumbai where there is a skyscraper is actually very less amount of space availability for adoption of the solar. But going down to the smaller towns, B class cities, C class cities, I think so this adoption rate will keep going up because they have a space, they have a need 
and there is a financial feasibility. I think so all three put together working in a tandem, the rate of adoption even for the individual uh, customer like me or you or a, or a commercial building like this probably will be pretty much faster. Yeah, I think I think I'll just add to what Amit said, and you know, I think people who are living in Mumbai don't understand uh, perhaps the reality across the country. But today, the fact remains that even in cities like Mumbai, uh, Bangalore, or uh, Gurgaon, for example, uh, there's a power shortage. Bangalore doesn't have a continuous supply of power in most areas, uh, and this problem is going to continue because the per capita consumption, as Amit said, is going to keep you know is going to keep uh, getting higher. As we buy more appliances in our ho homes, as we as we buy electrical vehicles, for example, you know the the consumptions are going to go uh, higher. So uh, you know this the commercial reason coupled with the fact that there is no continuous power available will be a, one of the biggest drivers uh, even in the residential segment. You, you know if your rooftop can support it. So yeah. I let you guys go. I have one last question, and that is, what do you think about the growth of solar energy in the country? You know, how can we encourage adoption of uh, solar? How is Panasonic helping achieve this? If you see the policies which have been framed right now, uh, is really very supportive, as I say. Yeah. So if you see, uh, especially related to the renewable energies, uh, there have been voluntary targets taken by the countries, including India, and I think so. These targets are purely voluntary. And uh, they are clearly defining how many gigawatts of renewable energy they would like to install. And based on those commitments which are happening as a part of the action plan for arresting the climate change, uh, the policies are getting built up for the rapid installation of renewable energies to see that we reduce the impact. And these commitments are not only coming from the different countries, the Western countries or the developed countries, but even these commitments are coming from countries like us who are still in the developing bracket. And that's a welcome change that we could see that we are not trying to follow the path which has been followed by the developed countries is to um, actually utilize the, uh, the conventional sources to build up the, the country and the economics and then try to shift it to the greener energy. While what we are trying to do is actually build up the develop uh, or get converted into a developed country while using the renewable energy sources rather than actually uh, getting with the uh, added, added problems of the pollution while you are as a developing country. So policies wise absolutely wonderful policies right now. The atmosphere is very conducive, the adaptability is very high. The, uh, the rate at which the industry is also responding or the uh, or the different state governments are also responding is really going up and that is what we can see in last 10 years uh, we were small uh, market in solar which was like less than few hundred megawatts uh, is today almost has reached to the level of 45,000 megawatt which is quite a considerable achievement uh, in last six to seven years major majorly where it has contributed in terms of the installation base. Yeah, and I think I think the uh, the I think the writing is very clear on the wall. Uh, Indian government is not making any uh, you know it's not trying to hide it. I think very clearly it's all about Atmanirbhar, right? So India India wants to be self-sufficient in the space of uh, solar at least. Uh, so you, you know you know that the government has announced uh, you know huge target 450 megawatt uh, gigawatts uh, by 2030. Uh, and I, thought, I think the way that we are going, we will perhaps get there. Now to achieve this uh, installed uh, capacity, uh, India wants to produce its own uh, modules and integrate it backward. So today, the policies uh, may affect people who are import dependent, right? But people who have uh, started utilizing local uh, modules and uh, other components. I don't think, as Amit said, I think the policies are very, very supportive uh, to the solar uh, installation and also uh, manufacturer. Thank you for this very uh, insightful chat that we have uh, we got from you. Great insights you gave us. Thank you, Mr. Agarwal. Thank you, Mr. Barwin. It was a pleasure chatting with you. So once again, I thank both, both of you for taking the time out to join us here on Outlook.